All right, everyone, the Mo Russia connections keep getting more and more fishy. First uh, news of the day is actually there was a, a literal Russian intel agent at the meeting with Donald Trump Jr. Now, I don't think Donald Trump colluded with Russia, but it is not a good look for his son to be sitting in on a meeting. Like, the lawyer doesn't matter because she's like non-Kremlin, low-level, nobody fucking cares, was cleared into the country visa-free by Obama's DOJ, I think that's fishy in and of itself and on the Democratic as opposed to Trump side. Uh, but having an actual, like, Russian agent there at the same meeting, uh, while Kushner was, I think Manafort left early, uh, no, that's not a good look. In all honesty, we gotta be honest about that fact, it's really not. It probably doesn't extend to the president, but his son got swept up in something, even if it was spawned by the Democrats. But now we have uh, word that John McCain was openly discussing sort of the, op, uh, the opposition research stuff from Orbis uh, with foreign agents. <laughs> that is, John McCain is the one colluding with people from a foreign state in a political capacity. Now, I'm going to go out there on a limb for a minute, and I'm going to say what I think uh, ultimately, in a general sense, I think I have a rough idea now of what actually happened with regards to the Russia bullshit. Step one, when Donald Trump first gets into the race, other candidates, specifically it seems Jeb Bush, conduct opposition research into him as they do with anyone. Now, Jeb Bush is the big money candidate. He's, he's sort of the Clintonian Republican. They do this sort of thing. They have the focus groups and they have opposition research. That's what they thrive on. They have their internal polls. Everything is very mechanical, very cable news era style. He conducts that research. Through the first few states, it becomes clear to unmedicated Republicans like McCain, in all honesty, strategically sound, that Donald Trump is the front runner. He says, oh shit. As the other Republicans begin dropping out, all of that opposition research is swept up. They grab a hold of it and they start conducting their own shit with Orbis and these other groups. So they try to ensnare Trump's inner circle with Russian stuff they're hoping to get a big scandal because they're hoping to destroy his candidacy. When it turns out that his candidacy is unaffected, uh, they move to the next stage. The next stage is they talk to the Democrats and release all this shit through BuzzFeed later uh, when he's actually president. But right now, we're talking mid to late stage primaries. I think John McCain and these others were already talking to the DNC trying to give them material. I think that they had Obama help cover things up with the Russian server, uh, the, the Russian hackers in the DNC server bullcrap, when in reality it was uh, private individuals leaking information, it had nothing to do with Russia, I don't think. So they try to protect Clinton, because through that stage, they're like, well, uh, as long as we all help out, you know, if a bunch of us higher hitting Republicans secretly are helping out the Dems, uh, Clinton's going to wipe the floor with him. It's not going to matter because they want Clinton. She's a globalist and a neoliberal. Neoliberals are much closer to neoconservatives than Trump's variant of mild reform. That is, his, his style of reform is still like 75% the same as the standard Democrat or Republican. It's just minus a few of the worst aspects of globalism. But they can't stand that. They feel like he's an actual free agent. He's not part of the deep state. He's actually apparently not rubbing elbows with everyone in D.C. and being very buddy-buddy beyond doing his own long-term opposition research back when he was a private citizen. They're worried, I think. I think they're worried he actually tears up bad trade deals, brings back U.S. industry, and deglobalizes our impact in the world. Now, somebody who's a fan of neoliberal Clinton or neocon McCain might say, well, they're doing it for benevolent purposes. Trump's ideas, even if he himself means well, will not work, will weaken our republic. Okay, believe whatever the fuck you want to believe under the sun. John McCain is provably talking with foreign agents about a dossier that is, that is uh, exposed as half fake anyway, gets published through BuzzFeed. He's one of the only people who had the full document for them to publish. Who do you think leaked it to BuzzFeed in the first place? John McCain, a Republican, is working with BuzzFeed on this issue. I think what happened then, it becomes clear Clinton doesn't win. Trump wins. They're like, oh shit. 
So what do they do? They begin laying more groundwork for Russian bullshit by talking to their people in the media on both the left and the right. You gotta realize, if this involves neocons and neoliberals, every part of the media is at their disposal. Why do you think Trump refuses to talk to these people? Why do you think he attacks them constantly? He knew what was coming. He started attacking them early on. You think he didn't know? Like he was totally blind to what people like McCain were doing? But do you think that he wanted to attack large uh, groups within his own party beyond saying, oh, they have some bad ideas? No, no, it would have been suicidal for his campaign. He knew he couldn't do that. So he just held his cards close, did the typical Trump on Twitter thing, won the election, and now he can lash out at these people. There's a reason why he keeps stabbing in the, uh, them in the back on uh, health care. Unfortunately, what you've got now is a situation that we have the most strangulated political position we have ever had as a country. And we have it specifically because there's a core of, of the Republican Party that seeks to get rid of Trump as well. They probably do want to, they, yeah, John McCain would probably love to vote for impeachment. He's looking for an excuse. He's probably still helping the Democrats with the line uh, trying to drum up support for that. Who do you think gave all that opposition research to the Democratic Party? It was probably John McCain, who leaked uh, this dossier to BuzzFeed, even though the dos the, uh, the, he got fooled. The FBI got fooled. It was always fake. Most of the content there isn't even real, and it is provably not real. Some of it was copied verbatim from Wikipedia. But, and, and the Pissgate stuff was inserted li literally by trolls, was tacked onto it, and taken seriously by some of these firms. We're talking Trump hiring Russian hookers to urinate on the Obama's bed. It was reported on as though it was real. And they got it probably from John McCain. We then have this, uh, this British agent. His name is uh, was Andrew Wood. He confirms, yeah, John McCain actually like was discussing this uh, uh, you know, with me. And, and, and we were actually talking about it. And, and McClatchy has gotten a hold of this information. John McCain, uh, it, it appears, is the kingpin of the entire Ma Russia bullshit because he took that Republican op research and he fed it to the Democrats. He fed this sort of shit to the media and he's doing anything that he can to try to stop Donald Trump because he feels uncomfortable with Trump's style of governance or he feels uncomfortable with ending globalism or because basically he is a Democrat anyway because, you know, most Democrats and Republicans are basically the same. I've said for months now, I've said the Republicans aren't fiscal conservatives. Their idea of fiscal conservative is we lowered the tax rate half a percent uh, and it's basically theatrics. The Democrats aren't liberal. Their idea of like liberal policies is, oh, we up the budget for this one welfare program by 2%. These people are the same. They have the same fucking ideas over and over again. Of course, they're pissed off at Trump. He actually wants to secure the border. That's a big problem for both the Democrats and the Republicans. He's holding off starting another war in the Middle East. Oh, how will our arms dealers' friends, uh, how will John McCain's friends in the arms industry make their money now? They'll have to sell, uh, you know, regular firearms to regular people or to regular militaries that aren't in combat, which means demand will be lower. Oh, no, it'll like stall out part of the economy that funds uh, John McCain's uh, re-election bids. It's part of the deep state bullshit. It is, I mean, quite clearly. <laughs> he was almost certainly the one who gave these provably fake, dubious of manufacture documents to BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed, supposedly far left. Now, why would a John McCain work with a so-called journalistic outlet that, you know, it, it leans uh, quite a bit to the left? Why would he do that? It's because he did it on behalf of the Democrats. He was trying uh, to derail Donald Trump to get him out of there. They probably don't care if Pence is president. It's like, why do you think so few Republicans even want to talk about the issue? People like McCain probably do want to vote for impeachment. So it turns out that little John there uh, was uh, feeding material to British intelligence and to BuzzFeed and talking about this and bullshit. Meanwhile, you've got WikiLeaks running interference, trying to salvage the situation, pointing out, oh, but Clinton has ties basically to Russia too. And we haven't forgotten Uranium One. I certainly haven't. Why the fuck would Hillary Clinton go hard line against a group that she sold, like, what was it, a fifth of all U.S. uranium to? It doesn't make any sense. I think the Democrats and the uh, Never Trumpers might be the ones actually working with Russia. 
behind the scenes. This is just theatrics. It's Shakespearean. Most of what people think about Donald Trump is probably not true. It's just like his tweeting or his uh, tough man charismatic re worldwide wrestling floor show. That's not real. Donald Trump managed to convince a lot of his fans that he was a macho man. He's a slightly pudgy 70 year old. He's not a macho man. That's a projected public image. Likewise, they've been convinced now, a lot of them, that Trump is some sort of Russian espionage agent. It looks like, it's beginning to look like projection to me. Like people like John McCain and Hillary Clinton are really in cahoots. They're the ones that are selling us out to Russia or some other foreign power, which makes sense since they like, they uh, adulate the Pope, a foreign theocrat all the time. They talk about how great Angela Merkel is or how great Corbyn or Theresa May are. Well, when's the last time they talked about how great this country is? It's almost become like a bad word to them. They don't even want to discuss it. They don't, they, they, they even the never Trumpers, they, they're fucking Republicans. They don't want to say, make America great again. I wonder why that is. Could it be because they, uh, they hate the idea of any form of, uh, you know, self-respect for one's nation, unless it's a foreign nation, then it's okay because we can't have that patriotism thing. It makes people think about liberty a little bit too much or how we should not have globalism. I think that's what's going on. I think there's something rotten in Denmark. It's, it's starting to smell way worse than Loretta Lynch's panties. I know I pointed that out before. People thought that was funny. I figured anyone who hadn't seen that can see it here. Uh, I think the Clintons and McCains of the world are working together. And I think it's not just limited to groups within the United States. That's about all. Peace out.